Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld. This program is about the evolution of our soul, our spirit, where we're moving towards as awakened beings. And I'm so happy to have back with me today a good friend and a very well-known author in Europe, Lorna Byrne. And she has a beautiful new book called Love from Heaven, Practicing Compassion for Yourself and Others. Hi, Lorna. Good to see you. Hi, it's actually great to see you, Alan. It, I think it has been three, four, maybe five years, has it? It's been a long time. And our our interviews on YouTube get a lot of hits. A lot of people watch those. So, um, right. And I'm going to be hosting an event with Lorna at the Open Center on February 23rd. So go to the Open Center to get tickets. And Lorna is a, a beautiful being to see in person because you can see, I'm just talking to the audience, that she's tapped into these other levels. She will see angels, the guardian angels. She has a level of seeing that's um, beyond most people. Although I was going to ask you, Lorna, can most people have this if they desire it? I have to say, if you read Lorna's first book, Angels in My Hair, she talks all about her visions of guardian angels and how really your parents thought you were retarded uh, uh, because you would just have these vi and you you wouldn't know how to speak about it. Is that right? Yeah. When when I was a, a child, the angels used to say to me, you know, I couldn't tell my parents. So I actually, nobody knew till I actually wrote the book, Angels in My Hair. And as you know, it came a number one bestseller in, in Europe, mm -hmm. um, which was absolutely fantastic. But they just said to me to keep it a secret that I couldn't tell anyone. And I'm dyslexic. Uh, did I pronounce it properly? Dys dyslexic. Dyslexic. <laughs> I, I've been trying all these years. And because of that, way back in Ireland then, you have to remember it was back in the 50s or so, um, if a child showed any signs of being slow in any way, they were just branded, retarded. Uh, mm. So that's what what happened. And I know I always tell this the same story, but it was when I was maybe two or two and a half and I was playing with my little brother. Yeah. And I know you've heard this story. No, tell it. It's a great story. This is that, that happened. Yes. You know, I was playing with him in front of the fire with blocks and it was you know, our hands touched, went into each other. And I wasn't sure whether mine went into his or his went into mine. And it just exploded, mm -hmm. just sparks everywhere and and such love. And it was at that moment that the angel said to me, they were angels and my little brother was a soul and that he died before I was born. And of course, you have to remember my age. I didn't know that. Here I was kind of, okay. But he's my little brother. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it didn't make any difference to me. But sometimes, you know, I would see him asleep in my mom's arms when she was asleep in the chair. But he would only be an infant. He wouldn't be as old as as I was or, or older. And I have met him several times after that. So, so I thank God for that. They're always around you saying these spirits of our loved ones. They, they are, and I'm always telling people, um, you can sense the, the presence of the soul of a loved one um, more at the, at the moment and at this present time than you would your guardian angel. Because you have to remember, if you were close to somebody, you knew everything about them. You knew their smell, you knew 
their emotions, the way they felt. And so that when they come in around you, they can touch you with that. Mm. And, and you feel it. You know the way somebody would say, I could feel my little girl around me or I could feel my granny or, you know, and they give us so many signs. But again, it's, it's your guardian angel that allows the soul of your loved one in, a, in and around you. But, but the soul, your loved one comes and goes. It doesn't, sometimes we think they stay there all the time, but, but they actually don't. They have stuff to do, you're saying. Yes, they're, they're busy enough. So the loved ones of all of us are coming and going, but um, I guess it's what you're saying. The feeling is the same. Like, you know, you have a feeling about someone in your life now. That feeling doesn't change if they pass over. It's that same feeling. It is more or less that same feeling, I will say say that, because the soul will never, your loved one won't ever allow you to feel, you know, maybe a time they were annoyed or angry. They always want you to feel peace and compassion. They want you to feel their their love. Mm-hmm. So it's a little different that, that oh, way. I you know, sometimes you when someone says they felt the warmth. Right. So it's... You the- know, it's always love, but everyone, but um, but like you know, I feel love from different people in different ways, right? Would it be that quality yeah. of love? Yeah. So th- it would be in whatever way you would feel it from that person. Mm. Yeah. You know, but it would be in a sense gentler and softer. Mm-hmm. It it would have no human flaws in it or no malice in it, if you would use that right. word. Right. Because when you're on the other side, it's just pure love. People don't go through the lower emotions there. I have I have to say, I've never found that. Mm -hmm. You know, I I can't say, you know, agree with everyone else just because everyone else says it. If if I haven't found that myself, if the angels and God haven't shown me that, Mm -hmm. you know, like one one time my soul was being taken to heaven and I was on what I call the stairway Uh and no soul was going through torment of of emotions or anything like that. There was great joy um, of all of the souls going to heaven, but yet they were in heaven because you were already there. We're in heaven right now, you're saying. No, they the souls oh, the were soul of, of the loved heaven. ones were were there already, uh-huh. you know. So I I think we we have to try and and remember that and and love is so important. You have to remember. That's why I wrote the book Love from Heaven. Mm-hmm. You know, I was kind of a bit scared to write it because, uh-huh. you know, the angels you know said, well, this is what God wants you to do. I always remember Archangel Michael saying that. And I just said, but if I start talking about the soul and and, and that the soul is pure love and and that each and every one of us are actually pure love and and it is that radiant light inside of us that we are all trying to communicate. You yourself, even, Alan, are trying to communicate with the spiritual side of you. And and that's what the spiritual side of you is. Is love. It is, is love. Is love. And, 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 and it's pure. It's it's that speck, spark of light of God. Um, and it's inside everyone. And that's what makes us, as human beings, more human than we ever possibly could. And that's why we feel so much emotion. Mm-hmm. And... Yes, we lock away love when we should be letting it out. Because I, I always remember the first time the angels showed me a little boy when I was a child myself. Mm-hmm. And they said, Lorna, look at the band around his chest. And it looked like, you know, maybe about two inches in width, roughly. And it just looked like ice. Mm-hmm. You know, there was... And it just kept on tightening. And I couldn't understand why that little boy was feeling so hurt. I felt great sadness for him. I I felt his pain and hurt. And I said to the angels, I wrote it in my pocket. And I said, I wish I had a sweet so I could give it to him. Mm, Yeah, that's You know, to make him happy. And and that's what we're 
all meant to do is release that love that is inside of us. And I don't know about in America, but I, I'm sure it is the same in America. But in Ireland here, when everybody was growing up, and still even nowadays, we're told that it's wrong to love yourself. Mm. You know, that it's selfish and mean. And it's not selfish or mean, because you can't love anyone any more than you love yourself. I've heard people say that, of course. Lots of people have said that. But so to love yourself, some people think, is to be selfish. But you're not saying that. No, Explain. no, it's, it's, it's not. Like, a person knows when they're being selfish. Mm. You know, I had to say to somebody, listen, go out and, and have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or go out in your garden or... You know, give yourself a little treat, whether it's even, you know, washing your hair, you know, it can be something so simple um, or, or meet a friend. Mm. Don't feel selfish or mean about it. It's OK to love yourself. Mm. You are pure, pure love. You're entitled to love yourself. Yeah, That's why you we're know? here. Anita Morjani wrote that beautiful book, Love Yourself Into Life. Did you... I didn't know that now, but that's you it, that it, those words are, are correct. You know, love yourself into life. And that helps you in, in the words he used to release your soul, to allow your soul to come forward and to allow you to become more spiritual and intertwined with your human self than, than you ever did before. Because when you do that, you will feel more what oh, way could I put it, happier and peace, more peaceful. And you actually start to see life more clearly because here in Europe, loads of people have worked on the lessons that are in the book and they have said it has changed things for them. They're, they're happier and, and now they can see where they're going because if you don't love yourself, you can't see where you're going. You're depressed, you're down, you you hate, you're angry. Mm. It's all of those things. And I think the world needs love today yes. to stop us feeling that way. More than ever, they need love because it seems like, well, you know, the political situation here has a lot, has lost a level of love. I, I, I know you really liked Obama. And I'll, I'll talk, we'll talk about this a little bit at the Open Center too. But uh, yeah, it seems okay. Like I mean, we could talk about it now. It seems like the... No, no, we talk about it at the Open okay, Centre. We'll we can't talk about everything here, but right. okay. I'm, I'm really looking forward to some of the interesting questions you will have to ask, you I know, do. that maybe someone else hasn't asked before, and and especially for, for America, because, you know, I'm flying over, I think, on the 19th. So I think I arrive the next day or whatever way, because I know the time. Mm -hmm. But I know when the plane doors open, all the people will get up and their guardian angels and all of the other angels that are going to be on the plane. But I know as I step out, it's going to look so different than anywhere else in the world. And to me, that is incredible. The energy of America is so, so different. Why um, is I know I could, you, I suppose you have to remember you are, you have been gathered from all over the world. We're a country of immigrants, it's true. Exactly. But you are a new nation. Mm. You have just been born. And you are so important to the world and you have such a huge role to play. And and I, I think that's why God held back the book Love from Heaven, mm. not to be published till now, because I just seeing all that has happened, mm. I I don't know how to explain it, but I, I understand deep down inside of myself um why. I so, understand it too now because we need love. Now more than ever, in her, Lorna's latest book, Love from Heaven, Practicing Compassion for Yourself and Others, is all about love. It's all about this, well, loving others. I, I love the story you tell when you first saw the energy of love between your mother and father. It, yeah. it looked like a mist. Okay. Do you still see that with people? I, I do on, on different, okay. I don't see it enough. Uh, that's That's the thing. That's how... You know, most people only allow their love to come forward a little bit, you know, and, and that's their soul coming forward. Like I had often be asked, you know, 
um, do you ever see anyone's soul come forward? And it's really so rare. And, and sometimes if you do, it's only a tiny little bit because we're we're afraid and and we shouldn't be. Like, you shouldn't be. I'm not afraid to love. I mean, I, I, how am I doing? <laughs> Here, I'll send, so, I'll send you some love. Let's see. Uh, say say that again? I'll send you some love and you can see. Okay, well, I'm sending you lots of love I, as well and, and everybody over there. Well, you have a lot of love. You, you're very uh, non-judgmental, and I think you're really someone, because of your experience and your vision, um, sees everyone's soul and you know their soul is is good really yeah like everyone's soul is is pure is good and and can't be contaminated even though um people have been taught it can be and they can say you know that's why that person is so bad or that person has done something you know that is really wrong so their soul is contaminated but your soul can't be contaminated because it is pure love, because it's that speck, that spark of light of God, that radiant light that's inside you, ready to jump forward and intertwine with your human body. I can't wait for that day because the sooner we let that happen, everyone will see their own guardian angel. Mm. Everyone will see everything I see. And, and so much will change so rapidly, but you know, you have the power, the people of the world have the power to do that. Um, and I can only do my little bit is, is tell you all about it. Well, it's a big thing because you're leading the way with your clarity and vision. But uh, when you see someone who has this band across their, their heart, and it, it, it's a defense, it's a protective thing because they've been hurt. Yeah. So, but how yes, do we help people who've been hurt overcome that hurt? I, I think you have to say to them, you know, you love them and you're there for them. And just reach out slowly because sometimes when someone has been hurt so badly or, or even a little bit, mm. like they pull back, you know, do you ever notice people do yeah. this? They, they pull yeah. back, yeah. you know, and it, it's like, just say, it's all right. I love you. And, even if they don't respond to it, that's okay because you've said it. You know, I, I always remember the, the first time in in an audience, I think there was five or 600 people there, and I asked them all, you know, when did they last or have they ever said to their parents, their mom, their dad, they love them? And it was kind of a shock because so many of them said, but my parents never said it to me. And I I had asked them, would they, you know, when they get home or, you know, make that phone call and say to their mom and dad, I love, I love you. And it was actually the interviewer beside me. She sent me a message the next day and she said, you know, my mom and myself never said in our lives that we love each other. And she did it that night on the phone and her mom cried down the phone saying, I love you. I was just always afraid. Like, why should you be afraid to say I love you? Well, and allow that love to come forward and, and wrap around each other. Well, I say it now to my mother, but it's difficult because I feel I've been hurt by whatever. So it's like, I'll say it, but it it's not it doesn't just flow out. I have to, I mean... You have to force it. You have a to little force bit. it. Of course, well, I do love my mother because she has given me a lot of love. and um, but, for some, but there's been a lot of other stuff other there. Other things, yeah. So yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying it, but still it's... It doesn't come so easily. Yeah, no, I, I never realized it would be so hard for people to say, I love you. Mm. It's to me I'm I'm astonished by that. Or or even children or, or an adult of twenty or thirty or even sixty saying, you know, no one ever said they loved me. Or, you know, my parents have never said that and, and I have never said it to my parents or, or a husband and wife when you ask them you know, when did you say last you love each other? And they look at you and they say, 
maybe on our wedding day. But Aww. she said, no. And, you know, you have to. You, you, you have to do that because a man needs to know that their partner loves them. Yes, everybody. I When someone just acknowledges me for doing a video, it gives me courage. It gives me power and energy. Power. It's like, yeah. like, oh, okay, I'm glad someone's out there believing me, in me and sending me love. And that gives me more energy, yeah, to keep going. Yeah, and, and it fills you with, with hope and, and delight and, and it helps you to, to move forward. Mm. and see that, that you can achieve things. And, and in doing that, you yourself give out more love. So is love the essence of our soul? That's, it's who we are? Yes. That, that is who we are. That is the spiritual being. And the spiritual being inside of us has such power. You know, we don't... I, I have to smile because mankind doesn't realize, you know, if, if you would only reach in and connect with your soul and allow that love to come forward. You know, the, how can I say, and then that intertwining and that power that you would have. You, you know, I have written sometimes things about the future. Yeah. You know, and seeing what human beings are doing in the future, you know, now some of them are bad where, where we haven't, and but an awful lot of them are good. So I'm always praying for the good. And, you know, one is, is, you know, I always tell, tell this one is just seeing children out playing and their feet not even touching the ground, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, and they, you know, making, what would I say, how can I say it, drawing plants to help them to grow, you know, with their hands in, in, that, in that way and crossing a river without a bridge. You know, all of the things that we will be able to do when we allow our soul to come forward, that that spiritual side of ourselves, that love and, and for it to intertwine and we won't be getting sick. We don't be, you know, there'll be no sick and no achy bones and because all that illness stuff. comes from the parts of ourselves we haven't loved. Is that what you're saying? No, some some of our illnesses at the moment are diseases in the world. Uh, okay. Our human body isn't perfect, mm -hmm. but it is only when the soul and the human body intertwine. It's like become one. I call it intertwine, but then it won't get sick. Mm -hmm. Right. So how do we actually do love ourselves? What what? How do we do it? I mean, you're we're talking about it, but. What's the practice? I, well, I, I have seven different ways, and I, I won't give you the whole seven. Yeah, but they're all one in the of book. The, right. They're all in the book. But one of the ways is if you have a photograph of yourself when you were a baby, yeah. it's, it's handy just to stick it up somewhere. You could stick it up on your computer screen. Yeah. And every time you glance at it, just remember I'm pure love. I was born pure love, uncontaminated in any way. Mm -hmm. And reminding yourself that you want to get back to that, mm -hmm. to that, you know, pure love of yourself for your soul to intertwine. And, and remind yourself another is, you know, that you're deserving of love. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. You know, that's and, a hard one. That's a that, good one to remember. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and that it's okay to love yourself. And I deserve you know, it. <laughs> yeah, you're you're deserving of love, and and it's okay to love love yourself, and reminding you that there is abundance of love mm -hmm. in your life. I people miss miss that love. Mm -hmm. So it's. Do you think there'll be a time when the planet lives like that, where everyone comes from love? Do you see that as possible? I I I do I do see that, and. Um, our planet, our world will be more interesting because we will have changed completely. Um, it's like you'll be able to see all the things I see. And of course, I don't tell you. <laughs> you don't tell us half the things Very you Very little. <laughs> I know you do see a lot more than you say because I, I know you could see right into people's bodies if you wanted to. So it's, you know... 
I, I'm just doing what God has asked me, and, and I know this time has been chosen for Love from Heaven to be published in, this, in, in America. And I know you can get through all of this. Yes, we can. You have to conquer the hate and anger you feel at the moment. Is that why it exists, to show us that it's there? Otherwise, we just bury it? Is that why we're going through this, to show us how much... Well, it's not just in America there is huge changes. There's changes all over the world. Yeah. And I'm praying and I believe that, you know, we we have to pray for those we don't even agree with, those right. we might give out about. Yes. You know, we have to pray and ask for them that they'll make the right decisions for, for the rest of us. We have to help to guide them. And, of course, I get into trouble all the time when I say things like that. They say, how could you say that? And, you know, that person should be thrown into jail or that person should be, you know, done away with. And But 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 you can't because that's not allowing your love out. Mm -hmm. That's not loving yourself. That's only growing yeah. more hate. And, and hate, what would you say, seeds fear. You know, I can put fear before hate, and, and that's all we become, and, and our world will turn out to be a horrible, bitter place. Mm -hmm. So we have to sow the seed of love, and, and that's what I'm trying to, to do. Well, you are but doing people, it. You're not trying to. You're, you're doing your part by, by being who you are, by following your guidance, by writing these beautiful books, because re just reading this book, Love from Heaven, you start to feel more in touch with what love is. That's what I'm feeling as I'm reading it now. I'll, I'll finish it by the time I see you in person, but uh, I'm feeling that love. You're actually, it's in your words, in your in the writing itself. Mm. Well, I, I have to say, you know, um, I did feel scared about writing it, as I said before. Well, scared you know? Yeah, because most of the time when you talk about love, a lot of people just kind of, what would you say, or oh, go away, you know, she's only talking about love. But I suppose I'm talking about love in a very deep way. Mm. It is talking about love in, in a very deep and personal way within the book for it to connect with every person that reads it and for every person, in a sense, to go out into the world and, and to start to use the ways um, to help them to love themselves more, so they can love others more. But it's scary. Keep the stranger. But it's scary for you because what are you afraid of? That you'll be judged. Um, that's a hard question to to answer. Um, it is being ridiculed and judged and and saying, you know, all oh, that she talks about love. But I don't just talk about love. I talk about so many many other things. But, and yeah. a lot of us don't think how important love is. But that's the part I want to talk to you about, not for your maybe personal lesson, but when people ridicule us and judge us, we take that on and we tend to love ourselves less. So I think maybe the yeah. fear you were feeling was that challenge to your own love. And if we really yeah, love ourselves, exactly. it might, if we truly, truly love yeah, ourselves, I, that, it would that's matter. The even myself, I have locked away some of that oh, love. Oh, don't lock it away, Lauren. I, I, so I have, you know, but no. I, I'd have to remind myself, no, it's okay. And and that's that's what we all have to do. If someone says something mm -hmm. that hurts you, just say to yourself, it's okay. It's all right. It's, it's not that they're angry with me, really. It right. is themselves. It's where they are. And it is, in a way, not to take a personal and, and still tell them you love them. But is this part of the, I know it's very hard to do. It is. But it you is. can do it. But is this part of what we're here to experience as human beings, this um, challenge to our own soul love, you know, to love ourselves, even if people are judging us? Is that part of being human? Yeah, I think it is that challenge of of becoming a, a spiritual being. It is, you know, of, of allowing our, our human self, and it's it's our human self that's in denial. Like, the world is in, in denial. 
but but yet you know people are interested and hungry and thirsty and and people will laugh and ridicule Mm -hmm. but behind closed doors they may not you know um i've met lots of people who would say they would laugh and snigger and ridicule and they would say but secretly they're interested secretly they want to know that there is more to life well secret every not even secret everybody wants love every this is everybody ev- yeah ev- everybody wants it you know like i i have even spoken in in the book about rosma i call it romantic love because i can't pronounce the word properly romantic so romantic love, love. I mean, rom- romantic love yeah, I let you say that word. I, mean, I call loving, it rosemantic. <laughs> well, rosemantic's a very nice way of referring to it. But you mean love between a couple, like that that kind of... Uh, yeah, and, and about... how important it is. And, and those angels that I just see that deliberately do everything possible to bring a couple together. And then sometimes, you know, watching them and they telling me, you know, it's not working today, but we'll try again tomorrow. Where you are know? my angels? Where are those? No. <laughs> Why do you want some romantic angels I around love you? Some romantics. <laughs> I will ask. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I've had them occasionally, but yes, it would be no, yes, yeah. ask. I will but, ask. But so you're I saying will. the a, the rom, there's romantic angels around or romantic angels? Yeah. Around? Yeah, uh, there's particular angels that a deal particular with that. a particular angel that you know, helps people to to join together in that way, to to open up and not to be afraid, to take the chance on love. And and sometimes you 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 know, the those particular angels have often shown me, you know, a, a couple where maybe the girl or, or the or the guy and, and they may tell me that they are made for each other. Mm-hmm. But one of them thinks the other is not good enough or doesn't look well enough Mm -hmm. or doesn't like something about them and this couldn't be my true love and walks off and leaves them Mm -hmm. and love is romantic love is precious you know even if you only have it for a short time you know there's always a chance you will you will get it again is it more special than love in general i mean it opens us up but but then it also yes, hurts it's, when it's, it leaves, you know. Love, love is love. It really is all of the same love. But humanly, we have a human connection we need. And to us human beings, romantic love, we, we have put it in, in, in a box. It's separate from everything exactly, else. Exactly. And yeah. we look on it as the most important love of all. Yeah. But it's there for each and every one of us, but so many times we turn it away. So how do we stay open to that kind of love? Um, I always say, take the chance. If you see someone you like, say hello. Like I, I have, you know, watched the angels, you know, um, the romantic angels with someone, you know, across the bar and, and someone the far side and... You know, and the angels saying, you know, they're meant to say hello to each other. They recognize each other to see, but they always pass by because they're afraid of being rejected. Right. And, and you have to remember, sometimes when you go up to someone and you say, listen, would you like to come out for a drink or something like that? Or a cup of tea? I, I don't know what you do in America, but lots of times people will say no. I always say, ask again, because sometimes a person is shocked. Oh, good one. And they're over, you know, oh, God, no, no, no. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to see my mother. I, I'm going shopping with my friend. I'm, you know, yeah, yeah. and now it's different if they turn around and say, I have rings on my finger. You know, right. that, that's different. But right. you would have noticed it beforehand. Yeah. You're right. Yes. You yeah. know, um, so I always say, give it a second go. Uh-huh. Okay, that's good. Thank you for that. You're that, welcome. That little piece. But uh, every love can have that same intensity, love for your Every mother. single love can have that same intensity. But we make that yeah. special with that. And it's and then of course it 
it flares up and dies out and it's gone because um and and that happens sometimes sometimes one or the other you know falls out of love with someone yeah. in that romantic love and the thing is you should say to yourself that's okay it was precious when i had it but it does even hurt. though it's hard it does hurt it of course it hurts but listen, it's not love if it doesn't hurt. Oh, really? <laughs> it's not love if it doesn't hurt. Yeah. And that's that's what you have to remember. You know, lots of people avoid romantic love, and yet they're craving for it. Exactly. And they say, I'm not going to go into a relationship because I'm going to get hurt. Right. That's not a good But that's experience. what love is. Love is sharing and caring. Love is all the ups and downs, all the pain, but all the happiness and joy as well. It love. comes mixed. It never comes just all love, if you know what I mean. It's in, not in, in that just way. the honeymoon it comes you're saying. The honeymoon can be, can, ends at some point, right? Yes. Well, not, not always. It, it depends on, on how you allow yourself. Like, I always loved Joe. Yes, your husband. That, that never, never died. And you still love him. You still and love him. I still love him. And... All those ups and downs and all the hurt and pain, I I wouldn't change it for the world. Mm. And that's what you have to remember about romantic love. It is full of all of the things. If, mm. if it's only full of and you never feel hurt or pain, well, then it's like, you know, it's not true love. It's a fantasy. It's a projection. Yeah. It's not real. Yeah. Right. So do angels feel, I mean, angels are love, but they do they have the range of feelings that humans have? Um, no, they don't. They don't even eat or drink. They don't. You know, they, they will pretend. They're they missing will, out, you know. Yeah. You should tell them yeah. that. Um, but they have such love for us. And they're creatures God created long ago. And the thing is for us to remember that we are more than any angel ever right. could be because of that speck of light, because of that love, because of our soul. Because angels don't have a soul in the same way humans. No. They don't have a soul. No. But they but they, they have something, yeah. though, that makes Oh, them. they have whatever God gave them when he created them. But it's... But they're not part of God in the same way as we are. It's like, you know, God took, if you had your hand and you could take a little piece of yourself right. and put it into a human and, and it fills every part of them and it glows, it's that spark. It's like, that's not in an angel, but God created angels. It's it's like he, he took something else and, and molded them, created them. They're like robots in a sense. Or, I mean, not in an impersonal way, but... Uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that because I, I know so many of them personally. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to insult your friend. No, I mean, I'm sure they're, they're aspects of God, of that love, but they're, yeah. they're not here to struggle or to evolve no. in no. the same way we no. are. That's... No, and, and they, they will never evolve any more than they are. That's the first time anyone ever asked that question, by the way. Okay. I don't think I have ever written it in a book either. <laughs> Let's write a book about that. No, because I think that's interesting that they're, they're really here to main, help us with our own love as servants of, of a God force. Yeah. But yeah. they're not here to evolve themselves. That's, that's interesting. And our journey is one of evolution of the soul because I think as the soul evolves, God itself, whatever that means to people, evolves with us, well, as us. Well, this, the soul doesn't need to evolve. It is the human being that needs to evolve. But what is the human being without the soul, though? Because if God suddenly decided to take the soul away from everyone, how would I say? We wouldn't be human anymore. Yes. We would, we would be... I think I wrote it in one of the books, but we would be worse than than the animals of the world, or or, or the. I, I don't even want to think of it. No, it's okay. <laughs> but so, but the that's what I'm saying. The soul seems so much a part of being human because without yeah. it, we're not human. Yeah. But 
the human being as a kind of reflection maybe of the soul is what is here to evolve. Is that what you maybe would say? Um, I'm, I don't want to say anything wrong okay. or anything no, like, wrong. like that. You know, I, I don't know why God fell in love with us long ago <laughs> when we didn't have a soul. Like, I, I don't know why. And yes, he did. There was something he saw in us, in in the creation he had made, and and he didn't see the same thing in in the trees, in the rivers, in 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 the animals, even you know, or or in any anything else he made beyond our our own planet. So, do animals not have souls, and they have something, right? No, they they don't have souls. But if like an an, if you love an animal, yes, and you've cared for it, um, God will have that animal in heaven for you when you get there. Oh, because some people and, do see And animals, animals, you know, I I think I have written it in Love from Heaven about, you know, the old man's dog and and all the love the old man gives the dog and and that love. The dog soaks up and reflects back. Mm -hmm. And the more we love an animal, the more it will do that. And it doesn't matter what kind of animal it is. Mm. Have you ever looked at dolphins or whales? I'm just curious because they're very human-like. Yeah. Do they have something that's different than other animals? Or No, I, I haven't noticed just that they, when they come in contact with us, mm -hmm. I, I guess they know. You have to remember, animals, you know, they they have this sense of, they use one of the senses that we don't use to to survive. So when they come in contact with human beings, they want to please us mm -hmm. because they feel that love, that love we're giving them, that laughter, that joy, that reaching out, that contact. In that, in that way so they will keep coming back and love and looking for it and and wanting to learn as well wanting in to, order to please us yeah wanting to absorb it too I know when I come home my cat sits on my shoes and um, you know absorbs my energies and, and sometimes even sits on my computer back it's like what it, what's mine what's like personal to me my cat will just be, well, with, yes. be with that. <laughs> I guess that's why, because it's absorbing parts of me in a nice way. In a, very in a nice, in a nice way, and 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 that's 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 important. And I'm I'm really looking forward to just chatting with you in the open center oh, now. Like great. you know, so we'll I'm sure you'll have lots of interest questions. Oh, I, and I'll, I have a lot of interesting questions. So maybe. You can also do some exercises there with people that you have in the yeah. room. Yeah. And, and, you know. Because um, people like that kind of experiential. Um, yeah, no, I, I will do an exercise with them. And I may do a meditation yeah. at the beginning, just a two-minute meditation or something. Mm. And and I know I do the blessing yes, afterwards. your blessing is, is great. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give everyone a blessing. Um and I, I, I was on what was it, Christopher's, you know, the talk show there the other day. Uh, um, I don't know. And, and he was asking lots of in interesting questions and and everything like that. So I'm, I, I think it is five years since I have been in New York. Really, so. five years. I think so. I think it is four or five years. This is years. your third book released in the U.S., right? You had Angels. Yeah, Angels. but I have, I think I'm on my sixth or seventh book. In the in Europe. In, you, in Europe, yeah. Right, and you're very big in Europe, huh? Yeah, there's, um, I, I'm published in so many languages. I, I know the last count was 32, and I think it's still 32 on the website. But there's loads more added. But how does that make you change. feel? How has that has that affected you? I think it's I think it's incredible because <laughs> you know I'm dyslexic. I can't really read very well. I'm uneducated, but God and the angels have educated me in the way I, 
the way I I need to be for the world today. And but, but you know, they they said they would become bestsellers, but, but kind of humanly, I didn't believe it. <laughs> so I you do, kind but, of in the shock. But, you know, but I have to say, people love you, Lorna, because of what you inspire in them. So they're they're sending their love to you by buying your books and reading your wisdom because you're you're just delivering the message you know and they love you for that yeah i'm i'm just delivering the message and you know sometimes when you're in an airport like the last time i was in in the airport there heading to london and mm -hmm. um, no i was coming back from london and i think i was in heathrow airport and not very good with names mm -hmm. but you know, I was queuing up for, you know, to get on the plane and this young girl walking by with her family, I think she was about maybe 20 or something like that. And she just stopped me and said, you're Lorna Bird. Thank you very much for giving me hope, something to believe in. And to me, just her saying that makes everything worth it. You know, um, when, when you hear from someone that you've changed their life for the better. You've given them back hope, back belief in themselves. Mm. You know, I think that's 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 what it's all about, reaching out and helping others in every way I possibly can. But people don't have to remember there's only one of me. No, there's so one of you. But I'm doing my best. <laughs> you are doing great. And the books really do help. So you have more books coming out. I look forward. What are the titles that haven't been out in the U.S. yet? Which ones do you remember? Um, Stairways to Heaven. What's that about? Oh, that's uh, another incredible book. So Is that if, if the publishers take it, I, I'm not quite sure what publisher to give it to as yet. Mm. Like, so. Is that when you go to heaven and when you were talking about you going to heaven? Yeah, I think that's, I think God's library is in it as well. Uh, what um, I don't forget what's in each book. Well, like when you talked about you know, your own stairway to heaven. You were, how did that happen? You were going to heaven. Um, sometimes, you know, Archangel Michael might come along or, or one of the angels and they just say, Lorna, God wants you. And, and I could be anywhere. You know, and, and they just would say, you know, walk down the lane there or go into the woods or pull the car over. And they just reach in. That's the only way I can they, describe it. They reach and in. take my soul. They take you, you're out. And it's like you. They take my soul, yeah. And it's, what and happens to you? There? It's like, it's like as if they take my breath away. It is a little frightening, but I've got used to it. And where do you go, though? What do you see? Um, I see all kinds of things, and, and I have written so much of it in the books. You know, I, I think, there, I'm not sure if there is something in Love from Heaven, because I've cause I've written another two books since then. Oh, I know. So <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'd get mixed up um, what's in what book, but... Even in the new book that that is coming out in Europe in April, and it's called Angels at My Fingertips, that is full of so much new material and so many other secrets, which I have to say I was very sick when I was writing it. Oh. I'll share that with you. And I don't know how I wrote it. All as I can say, it's, it's a miracle, and it was God and the angels. And, and when my daughter... Um, Megan, who done the editing, you know, and she sent it to the publishers, and the publishers sent it back again, you know, looking for different things. And then my publisher ed editor saying he's coming over for three days. And when my daughter sent me the list she had sent to my publisher, um, I was actually in a state of shock. Why? Because I couldn't believe I had written so much and what I had written about <laughs> um, because I, I I wasn't actually well. I'm only better now, believe it or not. So well, You're looking um, very good. You're looking well. 
Well, uh, I, I just I just have to smile. Like I, I wrote that book in a year. I don't know how I did it, as I said. Plus, I traveled, done loads of talks and everything. And I'm even writing a children's book at the moment as well. But just tell me, when you go to heaven, what do you see? Like what kind of things are you oh, observing? Um, sometimes it is like as if you're just in a big corridor and everything is is white, but soft, but not clear. Um, and the time I went to God's library was the angel just pulled back what I would call like, like a curtain, but like a silk curtain, like lace so fine. And just seeing this magnificent library, like nothing on earth. Is this the library of the souls, what some people call the Akashic Records? I wouldn't have the faintest idea. I call it God's library. You, what, you have to remember, I can't read. No, but what was in the library? Books. What kind of things were on the... Oh, it was like, parts of it was, the flooring seemed to be like what we would call marble. But it was so fine marble, you could see through it. And I, I could see angels and souls underneath Wow. I could see it. it. It was, it was so. How would I say so crystal clear, and yet so like marble. But what it's, was on it's the hard book? to describe. I, I get then, a picture of that. But what was on the bookshelves? I'm interested. On the bookshelf was absolutely loads of books, and there was angels there, and the tables and chairs, and and all of the symbols that were on the bookshelves as well. Um. And they were all going through books. And there was holy men, I'd call them holy men, of, of other faiths there. Uh -huh. And even, I'm a Catholic, and even the apostles, some of the apostles there. But then there was the stairs. You will have to read it, because if I tell you what happens after oh. that. Oh, uh, well, it might be a couple of years before it gets published here. <laughs> But I'll pick it up in the UK. Well, well, you might be able to get it on Amazon. I, so I don't. So you went I up the know. staircase in the library, and okay, you don't have to tell us, but it was quite a surprise. No. Oh, like what? What happened that that time was was amazing. Well, maybe you could tell us at the open center when we see. I you. might tell you another little bit. <laughs> All right, I'll may I'll remember to ask you that. Um, okay. Thank you, Lorna. Um, Thank you. Um, it's always nice just to be with you because you're just sending love. Your your work is about love. Well, it is. It's it's about letting people know that that they are pure love, and it's it's helping people to know that they have a guardian angel that never leaves them for one second, and loves them again unconditionally. You know, um, and that that has been very important to to everybody. So, I'm looking forward to being at the Open Center. I think it's the 23rd. I don't it know is. what time. It's. I think it's around seven o'clock. Yes, Lorna will be talking. I'll be interviewing her, hosting her, uh, facilitating her love to come forward. But it always is there, and it's about her new book, Love from Heaven: Practicing Compassion for Yourself and Others. And you could get tickets if you go to the OpenCenterNY.org. And um, you can pick up the book. You can pick it up before you get to the Open Center, which I recommend. And her other books, which are really beautiful, the ones I've read, Angels in My Hair and, and Message of Hope from the Angels. I have those two also. So okay. <laughs> this, this one is somehow more immediate, more more accessible as a feeling sensation are the parts I'm, I've read yeah. so far. So thank you for your work, Lorna. Well, thank you, and I'll see you on the 23rd. Okay. okay. One more thing. What's your website? You have a website? Oh, my my website is um, LornaBurn.com. I'm not very good technically. <laughs> I know you. But I think it's Lorna Burn. L-O-R-N-A-B-Y-N. B-Y-R-N-E. B-Y-R-N-E. See, we do know how to spell. <laughs> I know how to spell it. <laughs> Thank you.
BYRNA. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you in person. We'll have a fun time at the Open Center and I'm sending you lots of love too. Thank you. And God bless. And see you soon. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time here. Bless you too. You're welcome. This is Alan Steinfeld with Lorna Byrne for New Realities. If you uh, want to reach me, go to my website, newrealities.com. You can hear this podcast on BB radio.com slash new realities and, and please look up Lorna she is a wealth of, of love and, and, and a force for good in the world so thanks again see you soon Lorna bye God bless